was like a, a two mile long stretch of flame heading south across the ridges here. Yeah, we were living in uh, Black Canyon here in Patels, uh, where we last set it in there. We have a mobile home and tent that we collected during more than 20 years. A friend of ours uh, who was part of our church uh, has family over here, and after the fire, he invited us to come over and see what the uh, devastation was and the problems that were. And so after we saw that, we went back to the church, and this group of guys here and uh, decided that we uh, wanted to be involved in doing something over here. And uh, we have a particular set of skills, uh, building and repairing, and uh, so we just thought we can be of some use over here. So we started coming over to the meetings and found out uh, how we could help and how we could be, be connected. And uh, so uh, after that, we uh, raised funds and uh, our church and uh, is raising the funds to build uh, three houses this year and then we're going to try and build some more for next year. We had the idea, but we certainly didn't have a well-established process in place. So it was a matter of asking around and seeing what we could find to help fit some of the pieces together. Uh, one of the things is when you come up here, you need a whole bunch of equipment. And lo and behold, one of the guys in our church was a uh, master Boy Scout leader. And the Boy Scouts had a trailer, and he said, let me check with them and see if they can't, uh, wouldn't be willing to loan the trailer to you for the time that you're up there. So that became available. I have a flatbed that we could use to haul the exterior walls over. We have a uh, professional contractor in the congregation that's retired, and he helped us, in fact, was instrumental in showing us how to build the, ex the exterior walls in a plant environment, in other words, like a production environment. We had, the core group of us, three or four of us, had actually built our own houses, so we knew about the building processes, but not prefabbing a house, prefabbing the walls and then bringing them over. So it was fun to get to work with John. He built plans for us, brought the plans over to Again, somebody else that had a large building available, and we were able to go in there and set it up as a production shop to build these panels. We took his plans, we brought the lumber in, and we built the panels within two and a half days for the first house, one and a half days for this house. It's part of our faith. Uh, the Lord tells us that we're supposed to help each other and treat each other as family. And uh, when you see something, somebody hurting, uh, it's, uh, it's something that's just automatic. It, it isn't something you have to ask, why are we doing it? It's just something that you do. So there's the joy of each other. There's the, um, the church and why we're doing it to help other people, as God said. Use your skills to help those in need. And then, of course, to talk to and listen to the people, the stories from the people that have gone through such tragedies. Uh, having these volunteers come in and build this house for me is just absolutely awesome. And it just almost makes me want to cry. When I retired, that was uh, my objective, and my wife too for that matter, to, to do something for somebody every day. Nos sentíamos perdidos, sin fuerzas, y con toda su ayuda. Tenemos muchas esperanzas ahorita de... Hey, the need is just as great the second or the third year as it was the first year, and not only that, but those people have suffered longer than the people who got help the first year, so kind of moved to be in it for the long haul. We're figuring that it will probably be two or three years doing this, and that's why we're continuing to try and raise money. All around you when you see these trees, it's such a constant reminder that, of what happened, and a reminder therefore of what needs to continue to be done.